Let's go ahead and create a server over on Forge with just some really basic setup, and then we'll deploy our code to a freshly created site. Now, before you start this, you're gonna need a spare domain name. And it's really important that you have a domain name to test this with, uh, because we're gonna be creating a subdomain for our WebSockets connection. And we're gonna be creating a reverse Nginx proxy for this. It's a lot easier than it sounds, but that's what we need to do. And we need a domain name for this to work. So if you have a spare domain name lying around, uh, go ahead and make sure that you have that available. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a server with DigitalOcean. Again, it doesn't matter if you are not using DigitalOcean and you're using something like Linode or AWS, uh, but I'm going to be signing into DigitalOcean later to manage my DNS settings for the domain I'm using. Uh, but you should be able to get away with this if you kind of know what you're doing. So we're going to use DigitalOcean here for now just to keep things real simple. Okay, so in terms of the setup here, I'm just going to keep this really simple and I'm going to call this Laravel WebSockets on Forge. The region I don't really care about. I'm going to choose the smallest server size because just for testing this, we don't need too much. PHP version 7.4 is fine. Uh, we don't need any post provision recipes. And the database, I'm actually using Postgres, so I'm going to switch this over to Postgres here. And we've got the database name here set to Forge as well, which is absolutely fine. You can change that if you want to. So let's hit create server. And just before we do anything else, let's wait for this pop up to copy the sudo password just in case we need that. So I'm just going to pop this in a separate file just so I have it and the database password, which is really important as well. So make sure you keep them too safe uh, so you can use them if you need to either SSH into your server. And of course, we are going to be setting up our database on production. So make sure that we have the database password saved. OK, so that's going to be provisioning. We'll need to wait a little while for this to happen. So go ahead and pause this, take a break, and we'll be back in a minute when both of our servers have been provisioned. OK, so once your server has provisioned, the first thing that we're going to do is head over to the default site and we're going to delete it because we want to hook this up to a domain name. The default sites are great for just kind of playing around with stuff. But uh, if you want to hook this up to a domain name, you're going to want to create an entirely new site here uh, with your root domain. Now, the domain name I'm working with here is just what I have hanging around that I registered, nuxcasts.com. So I'm going to enter the root domain just inside of there. The project type stays as general PHP and Laravel. The web directory here can stay as public, and that's pretty much it. So we can just click Add Site and just wait for that to create, which shouldn't take too long at all. So the next thing is we want to hook the Git repository up that we created earlier. So we're going to go ahead and reference this just here, and that is Laravel WebSockets on Forge, great. We're using the master branch here and we do want to install our composer dependencies because this is a Laravel project. So let's hit install repository and just wait for that to finish. And if you've hooked your GitHub account up to Laravel Forge successfully, this should go ahead and just copy everything down into the directory ready to deploy. Okay, so once that is done, we wanna make a couple of changes to this. Um, at the moment, what we're doing is we are uh, pulling from origin, which is pulling from our GitHub repository. We're going ahead and running the install command with composer. But what we also want to do is do an npm install at this point to pull down all of our npm dependencies. And we also want to run npm run prod. We ran npm run dev on our local machine, but now we want to run npm prod to create a production build. And that's pretty much it. What we can do is save our script out and we can go ahead and deploy this. Now, just before we deploy this, let's head over to the environment section here, hit edit environment, and just change around some of the config that we have inside of here. Now to do that, I'm gonna head over to the code that we created in the other course. We're gonna head over to EMV. I'm just gonna copy and paste the entire thing here because we've already got our push app ID and stuff set up, and we can just change a couple more things around. So I'm just gonna paste that all into there. I'm going to leave the push app ID app key and app secret to local, but you can change them over to generated values if you want to. It's probably a good idea. And the mix pusher host, we're going to leave at 127.001 just for now, but we will be changing that over to our subdomain uh, for our WebSocket server served via our Nginx proxy. Now, our app environment can go to production and our app debug at the moment can stay to, uh, true just in case if you have any issues with this. I'll leave it as true just for now. And that's pretty much all we need to do in terms of our 
EMV. Now, the glaring issue is that we need to set up our database connection correctly. So let's go ahead and switch this over to, well, we can leave it at Postgres because I've just set up a Postgres server on, on Forge. Uh, but we can change over the database, which is Forge. We'll set the username here to Forge and we'll set the password to the password that we copied a little bit earlier. So let's pop that in there as well and save them out and we should be good. Great. Okay, so next thing is to deploy this. So we're just gonna hit deploy now and hope that this works. Okay, so after a little while that was successfully deployed and you can verify that by viewing the deployment log. Uh, you can see that's going ahead and running NPM run production and all that kind of stuff, migrating our database. So now we should have an app that we can access uh, and register a user and all that kind of stuff. And you can connect to your database just to verify this if you want to. You've got your database password and you've got the IP address that you want to connect to. I'm not gonna do that just yet. I'm just gonna go and move on to the next part, which is setting up our domain. So at the moment, we can't access this site through the IP address because the Nginx config for this, if we just head over to that real quick, is set up to respond to nuxcast.com. Now, like I said earlier, you're gonna want a domain name that you can play around with here. So let's move over to the next part. Let's set our domain name up, both with the provider that we've registered our domain name with and within DigitalOcean, and then we can access the site. Then we can move on to start creating that subdomain with that Nginx proxy. 